Hi, welcome to video number two in my handmade collection, my project for 2020. It's daylight today in the studio, which is quite nice. And I'm getting ready to start introducing the project that I mentioned that I'm going to be doing all this year, which hopefully some of you may take part in. It's all about collecting materials together and just stitching just because we have a love of stitching. I'll be doing monthly updates of my project, but I'll do weekly ones where I can on my Instagram Instagram page um, at Handmade by Anne and it'll be tagged on my Facebook page as well. Um, so you can keep a weekly update. I'm also going to do a hashtag so that people can share what they've been doing and hopefully join on join in sorry um, to the project that we're going to be doing so without further ado I'm going to show you the inspiration for the project that I had over the Christmas holidays um, get started on the project and share a little bit more of my materials the colours the stitching and things like that over the next few months and hopefully you'll all join in so if everybody's ready and you fancy joining in watch this next video and then we'll see where we go from there okay happy stitching enjoy Inspiration for the piece of work that I'm planning on doing this year came from a project that I did over the Christmas holidays. For those of you that have possibly been to Shed 76 and a half or follow me on Instagram, you'll know that last year we did quite a lot of borrow stitching and just saving up all the bits of fabric that I had from doing these projects, I decided that I was going to make myself a book bag for this year's sketchbook because I love working in workbooks and just planning ideas and jotting things down but I'm sure I'll cover workbooks in a video probably later on this year. So the borrow stitching basically I gathered together lots of bits of fabric that I've got we all have them in our stash I got bits that I picked up from the vintage fair in Manchester last year bits that I bought online bits and pieces that friends have given me and generally just in my stash and it was applique together pinned in place lots of different shapes but one of the main things that was in the piece of work is mainly using a straight stitch to start decorating and you start in one particular area and build out from that so that's the front of the book bag the back of it I wanted to keep a little bit simpler so there's a lot more of the background that you can see which is this blue linen fabric but decided as well to do a pocket for my pens to go in so that when I'm busy sketchbooking I've got things all ready to hand and to be able to use so my workbook is this one this year which is a handmade paper book which I'm quite looking forward to starting working in but haven't started working in it yet and the book bag um, was just created front and back so it was made as one whole piece it's fully lined inside uh, machine stitch together so I did do a little bit of machine stitching and when I put my first pieces of fabric down I did just machine stitch the main bits in place just to hold it all together it's got cotton wadding inside it so it feels nice and snug so that's my book bag for this year and this has sort of inspired the project that I'm going to introduce to you shortly hardest bit about this particular project is probably choosing the colours that you want to work with. I've started um, working with colours that I also really like working because one of the things that I do notice on a lot of workshops are people's pieces of work usually reflect the colours of the clothes that they're wearing because obviously these are your favourite colours. So at the moment grey and mustard colours are mine. So I've gone through my stash of materials just to see what I've got and I have boxes and baskets and fat quarters and all sorts that I've kept saving for a rainy day but I've realised this rainy day might not be happening so this project is to use up those bits of fabric and just put them into something so that you've got a piece of work that shares your passion and your treasures with other people so there's a range of fabrics and bits and pieces so I've got little bits of lace and tatting off cuts of dressmaking fabric that I'd got. I'm not a dressmaker but you can't help but buy really pretty fabrics. Fabrics that have been batiked and dyed. There's some Yorkshire tweed in here, 
bits of linen, little bits that I've worn in raffles um, or if you go and there's a scrap bin somewhere, can't really, really resist. Then the threads that I've got to start off with, I've got two linen threads and three silk threads, but I will be mixing and matching other threads as I go along. So the first thing is to think about that. The second thing is to think about how you want to do this piece and there's lots of different ways that you could do it. I've decided that because it's going to be an ongoing piece throughout the year and I might want to keep adding bits, I've got um, a wooden bobbin that I've used quite a lot frequently and then a strip of cotton wadding because what I intend to do is I'll start working at the beginning, which is where you would normally start, and I'll carry on and it'll start wrapping around this bobbin so I can keep adding bits. I've probably got myself a length that's nearly a metre long just to start off with, just so that it's manageable, but I can then keep adding to that as we go along. So that's me with all my materials together. So the next step will be to make a start. I've got myself ready to start. What I've done is from my fabric stash, I've just started cutting myself out some little rectangles, some squares, just to start my piece of work off. I'll come to this one in a second. And I've got the start of my cotton wadding. You don't have to use cotton wadding as a lining. I just like it because I think it's really touchy feeling. It adds that little bit of warmth to your work, but you could just have a piece of linen, a strip of fabric. It's really just personal preference. Scissors, love my fabric scissors and I'm sure you're a little bit like me that if somebody else picks them up and wants to use them with papers you sort of have a little bit of a nuclear bomb goes off in your head because they're about to use your precious scissors. These were lovely gifts from my family and um, they know I've got a slight obsession so I'm getting quite a collection of scissors together. But that aside, we're going to make a start. So this is the faffy bit. Now faffing, um, for those of you that know me, I know those of you out there who are great faffers and could start this and still be doing this at the end of the year. So if you're about to start planning anything, one of the things that I would suggest is set yourself a time limit just to get yourself started. And we're not planning the whole piece. We're just going to start with this first section because the idea with this particular project is you can just pick it up and put it down as and when you want to do it. You just feel like you want to do some stitching just because you enjoy stitching. So what you want to do is just start playing around just layering up some of these bits of fabric. So I'm going to have one piece at the top end, so it's going to give me a little bit more of a solid start. I'm not going to trim it yet because I might end up wanting to move it. And you can just start laying on bits of fabric. Even the edges of the fabric can be quite nice. You can go beyond the edges of your wadding because ideally you probably don't want to see the wadding at the very edge, but frayed edges on your fabric can look quite nice just add that again that little textile um, bit more of a texture to your piece of work so you can just keep on just playing around chopping little bits up repeats because you've got the same fabrics you'll sort of start repeating these colors and shapes as you're going through your piece this one here just to make it a little bit more interesting cutting shapes out can be quite nice because you create windows to look through but if you cut the shapes out as a whole, you've got these shapes and that you can add in again later on. You can keep adding whatever you want. So edges of little bits of lace. This one could be really nice as you've got the gaps here. One of the things that you could do if you wanted to is just get a piece of your fabric. Have a look at the width. Just trim it down so it's the same width as the holes that's in your little bit of lace and then hopefully one of the things that you can do is just pop it through the hole pop it back through and you could thread it down all of it I'm not going to do it down all because it's not very exciting to watch but again you add another little dimension if it extends either side so I'm going to play around with this and then I'll come back with the bit that I'll be ready to start stitching shortly okay so I finished my faffing I uh, gave myself probably about 15-20 minutes just to start making some decisions and as you can see it's probably about a hand's length um, on my cotton wadding that I've done. I've pinned 
with some tiny little pins, different sections. So I've got holes with things running through, a little bit of tatting, a little bit of um, some embroidery on a little bodice that I happen to have got. Try and show you a slightly closer version. So this is stage number one, is just getting this section ready. Then I've got my thread, so I've got a mustard and a grey, some slightly thinner threads as well with the silk threads to start working from. And the next stage is going to be stitching. So I will start using just a straight stitch, nothing fancy to start off with, just keeping it really, really simple just to start working with. And by next Sunday, on my Instagram page, which is Handmade by Anne, if you follow me on there, I'll have some photograph updates as I continue stitching. And then this particular project will be back in February to give you a bit of an update as to where I've got up to. And hopefully, if you share your things and tag me in, I can have a look if you're having a go at the project. And hopefully we'll build up a little community during 2020 where everybody can share this piece of work and just enjoy some stitching alongside fellow stitchers. So until next month for this particular project, I wish you a happy Sewy January and I will see you soon.